creating a node structure, you must have two keywords in mind. Number one, efficiency, and number two, non-destructive. Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and in this video, we are gonna be looking at how to structure your node tree. Because through my private trainings, I realized that many of you don't really know how to build a node tree, like what comes first, what goes next. Even after training with other colorists, you might still be very confused by their complicated node trees. But for me, because I teach, I keep things very simple for my students to understand. If you have watched one of my previous videos about node trees, this is sort of like the framework of how I created those node trees. So today we are only going to be talking about how to structure it in a very general sense so that you guys can also create your own node tree for yourself. So I have a node here in my color page. And before we start building out our node tree, let's establish how the signal, the video signal flows. So the signal inputs from over here, this is green means RGB signal, which is your color information. So it inputs from here and then it goes through the node, which is the node input and also the node output. And then the signal outputs over here and over here is basically what you're seeing on the viewer itself. Now that we know how the signal actually flows, the position of our nodes are very important because if you position something upstream, like before this node, it will affect everything that is downstream. That's why creating a node structure, you must have two keywords in mind. Number one, efficiency. And number two, non-destructive. So I explained quite a lot of these concepts on my online course, but I'm just going to go through it very quickly in this video. How I'm going to build my node tree is, let's go by the processes, all right? So when we have our clip like this over here, which is a red lock clip, as you can see on this label down here, the first thing that we have to do is color management. So I'm going to do color management on my second node here. Let's label this color management. Although color management is the first step that we have to do before we get into color correction and color grading, it doesn't necessarily has to be the first node in our node tree. So we can position things upstream of the color management node and also downstream of the color management. So this is one of the reasons why I like to grade on a clip level instead of a timeline level or what we call a project level, which is this color management, right? So I like to do everything in the clip level alone in the color page. So for our color management in this clip, let's go into our effects and drag in a color space transform. And let me just quickly do some color management for this video. Let's do a red white gamut and also a red log 3 G10. All right, into rec 709 gamma 2.4. Okay, so that's our color management. So we go from a lock state into a color managed state, which is Rec 709, display output color space. Now that we have our color management, let's establish what sits above the color management node. So there are a few things that we can do. So I'm going to click on Shift S to create two more nodes upstream. And I'm going to clean it up. Over here, like I said just now, is where the signal comes in. So when its signal comes in, what you're seeing is something like this. So if I turn on my highlight mode, I can see what this node is seeing. If I go to my color management node, it's seeing this, all right? So on my first node, what I'm seeing is this, the clip in a lock state. So when a clip is in a lock state, you actually have the most amount of data, like in the highlights, in the shadows and everything. So at this stage, right off the signal input, I would like to do preservation, which is sort of like to preserve the highlights, to dim it down a bit, or to target skin tones better. So this is the stage where you can do all of that. So I'm gonna label this preservation. Okay, so once we're done with our preservation, we can move on to color correction, which is our second process. So for the second note, I'm gonna label it primaries. So in our primaries, we'll be mostly dealing with our primary color wheels and lock wheels, which is a macro level adjustment, which affects the whole clip simultaneously. But once we're done with our primaries, we'll move on to our secondaries. Second. 
secondaries. So in our secondaries is where we start to select things out, sort of like qualify, let's say for the greens using the qualifier and pick out the green color or the wood color over here and make adjustments on a more micro level so that we, uh, we can pick things up. Why I don't recommend doing secondaries before the primaries is because of efficiency, which is if we make the smaller adjustments first and then the wider adjustments, the wider adjustments might also affect the smaller adjustments. So we want to cut that out. We want to do the wide adjustments. Whatever we can't fix in the wide adjustment, then only move on and select things out. So that makes sense, right? And it's very logical, this node tree, okay? So after our secondaries, we can actually move on to something that we call a look. So this look is where we do our creative adjustments. So if you're on a warmer tone, if you're on a denser tone, things like that. Sort of like if, let's say in this scene, what I can do is maybe push the gain to a more warmer tone and desaturate it to make more of a goldish tone instead of a vibrant. So something like this, we can do that in the look. It's where you get creative, all right? So let's clean up this node graph. And I'm going to create more nodes downstream of the color management. So after the look, then only we move on to color management, which switches our clip from log state into a display color space, which is Rex 9 so you can imagine the color space from a very wide log color space. It compresses it into a Rex 709 color space. And this smaller color space will be much harder to work in because we don't have as much data and flexibility to push the colors. That's why we want to make all these adjustments upstream of the CST or the color management in order to really maximize that data, that flexibility of pushing the colors. So downstream of our color management, we will have things that work better in Rec. 709. The first thing that I like to do is noise reduction. Yes, this is a bit controversial, but you can see my video on noise reduction to know why I decided to put it in a Rec. 709 color space instead of a log color space. All right, and after our noise reduction, then we can move on to our effects, All right, effects. So any effects like film grain, film damage, or camera shake, or if you want to do some patch replacement, everything you can do in the effects, which is right at the back. So film grain would definitely sit behind noise reduction because we don't want to add film grain and then do the noise reduction, which will reduce the noise that we just added. So it doesn't make sense. So this lineup, this structure, makes quite a lot of sense to me. And I've been using this framework to build all of my node trees and until now it works perfectly fine. Remember the two keywords, efficient and non-destructive. So the nodes, the adjustments that we make won't be fighting with each other, which is not something that we want. Because if that happens, then it will create a lot of banding and a lot of unwanted artifacts in your clip. So with this framework in mind, you can feel free to add stuff and modify it however you want because I know a lot of other colorists out there, they have their own structure of node tree and it works for them. So another thing that I teach is if it works, it works. So there are other more senior colorists than me that has their own workflow, but I hope this was easy enough to give you guys some sort of structure while you're building out your node tree. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.